Okay, Phil, I mean, this is something I'm really, uh, I mentioned in my discussion here about Noah's Ark, this is something I'm really fascinating I'd like to get out of you because mm -hmm. in my experience, like I said, Christians are afraid to talk about this because it's so divisive and as a result of not talking about this, it lowers the intelligence of the entire Christian community because they cannot talk about this. So in the Christian community, you've got people that believe in this young earth and then something totally different, old earth, and then some of them totally agree 100% with modern science. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, to know from you, especially if you're a religious teacher, you teach theology at university, so you should be able to have an opinion on Noah's Ark, how to interpret that. That's right, I have an opinion. Okay. And I'll tell you. Okay. Ah, I'm not afraid. Okay. Um, I, I think the, the Noah's Ark story is a myth. Now, what does that mean? There are two meanings to the word myth, and we ought to be careful about them. Um, one is that it's a very large story that organizes people's belief. It's clearly a myth in that sense. And our students have to come to George Fox and they say, oh, the Bible is full of myths. Oh, no, that's terrible. Um, well, 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 Phil, Phil. Okay. okay. I, I, I want to I want to continue on. Okay. Okay. So basically, you just you just say it's a myth. That means it's not literally true. It's figurative. It's figurative. Uh, it's no, we're coming to the second meaning. On okay. the, the second meaning, yes. On the first meaning, I was just trying to explain to people why they shouldn't be afraid of the word myth. But go ahead. Okay. Let me let me let you finish him. Let's, let's be clear about what, what a myth is. Go ahead. Can you just be real brief though, because I want to ask you follow on. Right. So there there are. A myth is a large story that organizes people's things. So the Marxist belief in a species being is part of a myth. Right, it's the, and there is the myth of autonomous reason that I attack in my, some of my books. So that's the one meaning of the word myth. Now, in terms of literal history, this is a typical meaning uh, of the word myth, in which case something is believed, widely believed, and, I don't, and it, it didn't happen. Uh, we have a friend here who thinks it's very important that we all believe that the myth was a literal, historical thing. I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what do you think about, do you think most Christians in the church, when you look at all, what do you consider to be real Christians, do you think most Christians would agree with you? In the pew? Probably not. Now, how do you explain that? People make mistakes. Either I'm making a mistake or they're making a mistake. Exactly. Don't, I, you know what I think it is? I think the academics know the truth. And they are afraid to tell the people, and the pastors are ignorant, and they can't tell the people. And so I think there's the, some of that too. So the people, there's are some, there's some it. freedom, there's some fear. I, I, I suspect there's people in the, the admissions office that, at George Fox. Says, oh man, don't go out in public and say that because it makes it harder to recruit students. But we're recruiting students like gangbusters, so I, you know, I don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, why do you think it's a myth? Why do you think the older? Why, why do you think there was not a global or a local flood? Can you give like one reason just for each? Actually, I believe there's all kinds of local floods. What do you mean a local flood? A local well, flood that the killed off everybody? The that local idea. flood idea, like reasons to believe, old earth group, they think all the humans were in one area, so there was a local flood that killed all the humans okay, in that okay. area. And they're, then know, I certainly don't believe in that kind of local flood, because human beings were spread across the face of the earth for a long, a long time ago, and so any floods that we've had, and we've had lots of local floods, okay, have only killed off certain people. Okay, that's a good reason. And, then, and why not a worldwide flood? I don't think there's enough water. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't know enough about geology. I mean, I read the geologists. That's why. Okay, so what do you think about the academic ability of somebody? What, what do you think about their reasoning process when they say, I'm a Christian, I believe there's a worldwide flood. Mm -hmm. Do you think that person should be corrected and educated? I think we should openly debate it, like what we're doing now. Do you think it's a valid debate to have? Or is it obvious? I'm pretty well convinced. But, as you say, we ought to be open to evidence. If people can present evidence, this fellow with the, the uh, orange sheet here says that there's evidence, mm -hmm. well, I ought to look at it. Okay, but see, you know, as an atheist, I would, I would be upset with atheists who are trying to make some kind of major point that's way off target. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it seems like as Christians, here's Christians saying there's a worldwide flood, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of very scientifically, I would say, naive and ignorant. And it seems like the Christians in academia are like, they just, they just keep their mouth shut. They don't want to confront it. They don't want to, because they don't want to make waves or something. Uh, okay, so. Do you agree with that? Um, I'm trying to figure out what's the educational problem here in Christianity. This is scientific thinking. This is, this is what I'm saying. This is the importance of scientific thinking. How could Christians so learn critical thinking when in the church they're steeped in, in things like this? 
so your question is, why should I not make it my business to change people's uh, beliefs about this? Yeah, especially when, the, especially when most Christians have the wrong idea, what you just said earlier. Because I've got a lot more important things to do. <laughs> but you're a teacher. That's your job, is to teach uh, people. I, I'm not teaching science. I'm teaching good philosophy. Um, now, I'm quite happy, you know, the, the friend is here. Now, it's important in this situation here, you're, you're deliberately trying to cause division between the two of us. No, I'm pointing out a serious problem. Yes, yes. And so and, I want to... the I Christians wanna... say, I don't want to talk about it because it's a division, but it shouldn't be a division. The Christians who are smart should say, look, this is ridiculous, don't do this. No, there wouldn't that be a division is completely unfair. Out. You're saying that this man is not smart. I'm that saying, is completely unfair. No, I'm saying scientifically... You just said it. Scientifically, it's ignorant, scientifically. All right. a fact. Ignorance is a different thing than saying somebody isn't smart. It's scientifically incorrect, though. I mean, okay. it's scientifically... Just be more careful. It's scientifically... Uh, it's a, it should be embarrassing. No. You should be embarrassed that your Christian community has this, but instead, the academics are saying, I'm not going to say anything because it's divisive. And I'm, now I'm, I'm being accused of being divisive because I'm bringing this up because well, it's I'm, something you want to keep under the covers. I, no, I don't keep it under the covers. I confront my students with it quite often. Some of them are here. You can, you can speak to them. We tr I try to bring people along. People are sometimes um, slow to understand the truth, slow to look at, at evidence, slow to think critically. And there is this widespread belief that somehow if we don't, if we think critically and use the best intelligence that we've got, that somehow this will bring us away from the truth. And that's why my friend Mark McLeod Harrison confronts the freshman. If Christianity isn't true, Jesus doesn't want you to believe it. Follow the truth no matter what. Okay, one point I want to make too is I think you're making a mistake of what you accuse the atheists of doing. You're saying the atheists make this, these science.